Hello and welcome to this online video lecture, this time on the advanced goal of understanding and applying the idea of open, closed, and isolated systems. By the time we're done with this lecture, you should be able to uh, take a situation that's given to you and identify it as either an open, closed, or isolated system. So make sure that you can do that. The thing that we're going to start with is this idea of a system. Um, system's a pretty common word, but we have to make sure that you understand the specific usage of it here in chemistry. It's pretty simple. Um, basically, when we're thinking of thermochemistry or um, when we're thinking about energy a lot of times, it's very useful to think of there being two parts to the universe. <laughs> and that is the thing that we're considering, which I'm going to represent with this really deformed circle here, that's called the system. And then everything else in the universe around it that we often will call the surroundings. So that's what a system is in terms of chemistry and thermochemistry and science. When we talk about a system in science, we're basically just talking about some part of the universe that's separate from everything else. And I know that seems really general and really kind of vague, but that's, that's really basically all that it is. And so when we want to dif differentiate these three different types of systems, open, closed, and isolated, it's, it's really simple. This is going to be a pretty short lecture. Here's what it boils down to. We have to consider two things, matter and energy. So if, oops, sorry about that, <laughs> I kind of double grabbed that color. If matter is able to go into and out of a system, and energy, let's see, I was going to use yellow, but I'm not sure that's going to show up very well. I'll use purple color. And energy is also able to go into and out of the system then we call that an open system. So basically, there's nothing that's separating the system's matter and energy from that of the surroundings, and the system and the surroundings can exchange both of those things. That's called an open system. Um, an example of an open system is if you have a pot of water on the stove boiling, maybe uh, very similar to a pot like this. Um, if you think about this, let's let's look at this picture and think about this a little bit. We're talking about energy and matter, right? So um, look at this red hot coil down here on, on the stovetop. That's adding energy to the system. At the same time, this very hot pan is radiating heat energy out, and um, heat energy is rising out, convecting through the air as well. So not only is energy going into this system, it's also coming out of it. And at the same time, there's no matter going into the system. But as the liquid water down here turns into gas, then we have matter leaving the system as well. So we have energy going into and coming out of the system, and we have matter coming out of the system. This, is, this would be a great example of an open system. So the next type we're going to look at then is called closed, a closed system. And um, it's very similar to an open system. There's only one, one difference. The energy can still go in and out. It's the matter that cannot go in and out. So if, if matter can't enter or leave a system, then it's called a closed system. So an open system, both matter and energy can go in and out. And in a closed system, only energy can go in and out. So an easy way to turn um, our pot here into a closed system is that if we had put a lid on it, uh, oops, what's going on here? Oops, oops. Derp, derp. So let's put a lid on this. I'm just going to draw a lid on here. Derp. By drawing a lid on here, maybe it's got a handle. Uh, by drawing a lid on this, what we're basically doing is we're preventing the the water from oops the 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 water from leaving now. So we've got um, we've got um, energy entering and leaving the system, but this water back here can't. It's trapped inside. So the energy can still come in and out, but the water cannot, and so now we've turned our pot, which used to be an open system, into a closed system by sealing it off. And so then you can probably guess what the last one is, the isolated system. Uh, that's the most restrictive of the three, and um, we're going to remove the energy now. So this is a system that's completely, completely separated from uh, the rest of its surroundings, neither matter nor energy can go into or come out of it. It's completely closed. And the boiling pot really kind of breaks down here. Uh, and a truly, truly isolated system is something that doesn't really exist. Um, 
it's really difficult to stop both matter and energy completely from, from entering or, or leaving something. But about the closest we can come to, or something maybe that you would understand, is like a thermos. So let's see. Here's a thermos. Probably this looks exactly like the thermos that my dad took to work for years. If you think about a thermos, the reason why it's useful is because it's, it's a pretty isolated system. Once you put hot coffee inside of the thermos, the energy of the, of the coffee has no way to get out. So its walls kind of trap that energy inside, and it can't leave, either through convection or radiation. Likewise, the energy that's outside can't get in, and that's why thermoses work for trying to cool things as, as keep things cool as well as keep hot things hot. Energy can't really go in and out because of the construction of the thermos. Likewise, uh, the, the whatever matter you put inside, whether it's coffee or tea or whatever you got in here, um, it's trapped inside and no matter the temperature of it, even if it's kind of boiling and steaming inside, it's trapped in here and it can't really go anywhere. So all of this stuff is trapped inside and um, the matter can't go in or out. And I mean, obviously, if you, if you throw some water or something at the outside of the thermos, it's just going to bounce off and it's not going to be able to go in either. So the matter and the energy can't go in or out and that makes a thermos a closed system. So that's basically it. That's what it comes down to. It's that simple, open, closed, and isolated systems. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in class and thanks for watching.